Does anybody know who coined the term narcissistic abuse? Don't put the name in if you know. In the chat box, put yes or no if you know who coined the term narcissistic abuse. No, a lot of no's. One yes. Okay. <laughs> Seems to be ancient Greek. Okay. Yes, that's true. But the term narcissistic abuse was coined a few decades ago, and it was coined by Sam Backman, who is a diagnosed uh, narcissist. And the reality is, is that he coined that phrase not to mean emotional abuse by a narcissist. Not sure if that's what you guys thought it was, right? But sometimes people think that that's the defini definition of narcissistic abuse, emotional abuse by a narcissist. But that's not the case. And it kind of makes sense that he wanted a different term because you think about it, we don't have uh, schizophrenia abuse. We don't have bipolar abuse because anyone that has that, those disorders and abuses, that would fall under the umbrella of emotional abuse, right? But narcissistic abuse doesn't fall under the umbrella of emotional abuse. And I think that's what we need to understand, especially when we realize how long the journey is taking. So with that in mind, I want to pull up this document. Okay, and I don't want to minimize uh, emotional abuse at all, but the reality is, is if we've undergone emotional abuse, it affects us. It affects certain areas of our life, right? Psychologically, it affects how we feel about ourselves, our self-esteem, but the majority of our life stays intact. And after the relationship, even though we have to heal, we're still us. We know who we are. With narcissistic abuse, it's almost like you're erased and every aspect of your life is dislodged and um, affected. With that in mind, I wanted to just read uh, a couple of things that Sam Beckman himself said be as a result of why he, he created that term narcissistic abuse. He said, narcissistic abuse is not simply emotional abuse inflicted by a narcissist. It's very different from any other form of abuse and has a different outcome. Narcissistic abuse is all pervasive. It affects the victim's cognitions, emotional states, subconscious programming. It affects how you feel socially. It even affects and attacks your free will. Victims experience a deterioration in cognitive functioning. So your memory, your thinking ability, problem solving all gets affected. Victims experience emotional dysregulation and this kind of abuse spreads and permeates every aspect of the victim's personality and life to the point that you lose your self-identity and feel as if you can no longer recognize yourself. Pausing right there, I don't know how many of you were in my uh, first workshop, but if you were, just type in yes in the chat box. But in that workshop, I shared a true experience where I hadn't seen my younger brother in years. And my younger brother always, you know, called me La Princesa, told me I was beautiful. And I hadn't seen him in years. So I called him up before he came and I warned him. I was like, I just wanna warn you, <laughs> be careful when you see me because it might shock you because I don't look anything like myself. Now, of course he came and he was like, Michelle, I mean, you look just like you. But just like Sam Backman said, that separation from self is so powerful. We lose that connection to self. And for some, if they've undergone it from childhood, they never had that connection to self in the beginning. And the last thing I wanna quote from him, he said, narcissistic abuse not only encompasses domestic violence, emotional and psychological abuse, but it also involves brainwashing. With infiltrating the subconscious mind of the victim and reprogramming that person. It is a psychological invasion. Okay, why am I sharing that? To help you to realize that the journey to heal isn't overnight because what you have gone through is intense.